Hey, hi everybody, it's Sarah. Okay, today we're gonna look at the Mercury retrograde forecast for our friend, the Cancer Natives. Yeah, we have another round of Mercury retrograde coming up, yeah. So, <laughs> It's going to start, the pre-shadow starts on February the 1st, and then we'll run through mid-March. And I'll put a slide with the actual days of the retrograde up here. And of course, they're plus or minus a day on either side, depending on where you are in the world. So this retrograde's gonna be a little bit different. Each one, each cycle that we have is flavored by where it lands. And this one is in Pisces and in Aquarius. So we can expect chaos and dysfunction <laughs> in anything that's related to group, teams, clubs, or associations or networks. Because yeah, Mercury also rules communication and travel. So of course there will be some communication and travel hiccups, which are standard. But don't be surprised to see Facebook hit particularly hard during the cycle. And you may even see a notice on Google that Facebook is down for a while because of this energy. So whether you love or hate Facebook, just, you know, kind of a heads up. Okay, when Mercury retrogrades in Aquarius, as I said, this sign governs relationship, friendships, and everything in between. You can expect that to go off the rails. You can expect to have miscommunications with your significant other or your bestie. Suddenly, you don't speak the same language. Cancer is known for being so loving and so caring. People love you and people flock to be around you. But the words that you're saying, they're not hearing right now. So this can be a, a trying time for you too. Don't get pulled into petty or silly arguments during this time because it's all just misunderstanding. So don't take any of it personal and just do your best to not get caught up in them. Now that being said, I'm not saying you should just give up and hide away till the cycle is over, but just be aware that how you react to the situation can either make it better or worse. Don't take it personal when appointments are canceled at the last minute or people show up late or cancel at the last minute, okay? Most folks are going to end up in a mental fog because of the Pisces end of this, and they're not going to be thinking clearly. So be more aware when you're driving or doing anything difficult or dangerous to really pay attention and stay focused. This mental fog will settle in and you can expect to get caught up in daydreams, old memories, and forms of escapism. You may spend more time dreaming about the past and could be prone to letting day-to-day -day realities or chores slip through the cracks. So watch out for that. This is a good time to finish up those projects you put off. And of course, if you want to learn more about the cycle itself, you can visit this other video. I'll put a link up here and below in this description box and it's the overview of this retrograde. So what we're going to do today in this video is I'm going to pull three cards to look at the main lessons you'll be facing during this retrograde and one card will be your tool or your greatest strength for making it a little bit easier and getting through this. So obviously this is a blanket overview for cancer so if this doesn't resonate with you then no worries just pass it on by and I hope you find what you're looking for. Okay so let's Let's see what lessons, challenges you will be facing during this cycle. Let me shuffle really quickly. Okay. I'm going to, as I said, draw three cards from the Fairy Oracle deck to see what the lessons, challenges will be. And then I will draw one Ascended Master card to better understand how you can handle this situation or these hurdles. Hmm. Okay. The first card is Raise Your Standards. Okay, Cancer, are you settling for less than you deserve? This appears to be one of your lessons in this cycle, but it's also kind of a life lesson too, isn't it? You know this has been a problem in the past. You're so loving, so kind, so nurturing, and have so much to give. Yet sometimes you forget to take care of yourself or make yourself a priority, and it kind of seems like people run over you. Yeah, it's easy for you personally to put the needs of others ahead of your own, but looking at your current situation, has this totally gotten out of balance? Are you totally the one giving and everyone else around you just seems to be taking? So are you living your life basically for someone else and ignoring your own feelings. And could that be why lately you've been thinking about people from your past, thinking about how different your life could be right now? Nostalgia is nice and everything, but the problems are in front of you. So don't go down that rabbit hole where you're just kind of going through the motions at home because you're thinking about the past, reminiscing about 
people from the past. The problem is in the present. Begin by acknowledging the problem and then by making a commitment to manifest an improved situation. Believe it or not, the universe will respond almost immediately. Really, and then voila! The situation will change. But is that what you're actually afraid of? That it will change in a way that you maybe don't want? Maybe like you leaving or the other person leaving, right? You know the type of life you were meant to lead. Don't you feel like you're settling and settling for less? And hoping the situation will somehow improve on its own is more wishful thinking than actually anything. Things, relationships, situations rarely get better without some sort of change on our part. Someone has to do something to get things to change. Just talking about the situation isn't doing it. It's not making you feel better and it's also not activating the changes you want and you feel like your feelings are being ignored. So if you're on the fence saying that it's not that bad, you can expect this cycle to show you how you truly feel about the situation. And while it may not be that bad, it also isn't what you want. So if you seem stuck, take a moment, get quiet, and write down what you truly want. What do you truly desire? And then revisit that list daily. Edit it, add to it, and get clearer on what you want. Then make a commitment to stop selling for less. The affirmation for this card is, I deserve and expect the best in life. I hold high standards for myself. Because guess what? You do. Everyone does. Everyone deserves a good life. And it's important you know that you deserve it. You deserve to be happy. You deserve to have a peaceful, fulfilling, nurturing life. We all do, as I said, actually. And if you are currently in a situation that isn't giving you the love or support you need, then it's time to start thinking about going somewhere else. Now, that being said, I repeat, start thinking about it. Don't make any big or radical changes until after the cycle is over. Make use of this time by getting clear on what you actually want. Yeah, okay. We went straight to the heart of the matter, didn't we? The first card. All right, so let's see what the next card is. Mmm, positive expectations. So this card has been showing up a lot lately in the readings that I've been doing, both personal readings and these forecast for the signs. I think most people are struggling with staying positive after the lessons and challenges of 2018 and 2019. And those lessons were tough. They, they really were. So has it been challenging for you lately too? And are you having a hard time staying positive? If you're not taking care of yourself and if you're struggling, the situation will not probably get any easier, right? And I know it's hard when you feel like you're so overwhelmed to take the time to really work on self-care, work on, say, you know, meeting an exercise routine or keeping up with your spiritual routine. But this is the time you need it the most. This is the time that you need to be saying the affirmations. This is the time you need to be journaling and meditating or taking spiritual classes. This is the time when it will really, really help you too. Maybe you've lost your faith that things will get better and it's kind of like, why try? And that's not a good place to be. I hear from clients all the time that they feel like they're struggling, like they're drowning from so much responsibility that it's all they can do to do the bare minimum. You know, get up, go to work, do the chores at home, fall into bed every day. And that's not how we were meant to live. We were meant to have experiences here that don't revolve around paychecks or doing bare minimum chores. This lesson is about believing a shift is taking place. Your life will not always look like it looks today. Most things worth doing or having take time and commitment. So this lesson will be a reminder of that. You have to stay positive to manifest a positive outcome. Don't give in to fear or worry. It's not productive and it will not attract the outcome that you want either. If possible, weather permitting, go outside, meditate, hike, have a picnic, or just sit. Do something outside and allow the healing power of nature to restore and refresh you. The affirmation for this card is, I am safe, confident, and secure. I feel joyful about my future. Mm, it's really nice, isn't it? Commit to staying positive and watch the energy around you shift. So that being said, if you would like a personal reading, I am running a February special right now. Book your personal reading for clarity with one to two questions answered in a 15-minute video mailed directly to you for only $48. And you can make payments with Vimo or PayPal. So the contact stuff is listed below. And I only have a few more slots left because I can only do so many in a month, okay? So let's draw the last of the fairy cards. So, okay, 
higher consciousness. Okay, this card goes right along with the theme too, doesn't it? And it's been showing up as well. This challenge will be about learning to listen to your higher self or your higher consciousness. You are very intuitive and have keen insights, but for some reason, you're prone to disregard them or shut them down completely. So this lesson is about not discounting your gut feelings or your intuition. Think about how, how would your life change if you were able to connect with your higher self or a higher consciousness? and actually use and embrace your gifts? What if you could count on them? What if you could trust them, right? This lesson during this time will be just that. So it's really important that if you have a gut feeling or a premonition about something, say getting on a plane, dating someone, planning a trip, whatever it may be, that you follow it. When we tap into our higher selves, we listen to love instead of fear. So it's really important that we shift that, move out of the fear, and also be aware that we are able to trust the messages that we get. Sometimes this divine guidance comes to us as inner knowing, seeing signs such as a feather or 1111 or something in dreams. You can also receive guidance from repeating themes such as say a name that's repeated in magazines, TV, books, you know, people are talking about it on the street all in the same day for no apparent reason. Or other flashes of insight where you suddenly know. You know that this is not for you. To improve this talent or gift, you need to to carve away time though away from noise and stress. Being stressed is not conducive to tapping into a higher consciousness. So you may need more time alone to be able to hear or understand the messages being sent to you. But definitely make time to work on this during the cycle. And we do seem to have quite the theme, don't we? Okay, so let's draw the Ascended Master card now. This is your tool or strength you can use during this time to handle these lessons. Hmm. The power of joy. Do you see the theme here? Your biggest tool for coping with these lessons during the cycle is your own state of mind. If you can stay positive, if you can tap into a higher consciousness and be happy, or at least not fall into the trap of worry, everything will flow so much smoother. You have amazing powers of manifestation, so staying positive will allow you to bring in positive experiences rather than challenges or more challenges during the cycle. So that's a lot to unpack, I know. It's probably, though, nothing you didn't already kind of feel approaching because you know things haven't been okay at home for a while. You've been pushing yourself to and trying to make a situation work that hasn't been working. You've been ignoring your own feelings, ignoring your gut instincts too. And see, when we settle for less, it never works out because over time we know we deserve something better. And even though we think that we've got the feelings under control and that they're pushed down, they don't go away. So they have a tendency to sit there and grow or fester. And it's easy for us to get more and more angry over time and also to feel resentment for the situation. So your strength lies in being who you really are, the happy, nurturing, caring, warm-hearted person that people love. When you deny yourself by settling for less, it dims your light and you end up feeling miserable. It's time to embrace your higher consciousness, tap into your inner knowing, and expect positive results because you will be able to attract them. You've always been able to manifest. It may not seem like it right now because maybe the situation isn't repairable and that's not what you want to hear. So you're still committed in trying to fix it. But in the end, you deserve the love you so easily give to others. So don't settle for less. And I know it can be difficult to believe that everything's going to work out, especially if you're busy trying to hide or pretend that you're okay, right? When you're not. But if you want things to change, then you have to address this and the way you're being treated. So yes, it seems like the building energy will likely erupt in your home during the cycle. But you can use this time to get clear on what you deserve and what you want. You don't have to always be the one giving all the time and sacrificing for everyone else. Accept help and believe in yourself. You deserve to be happy. You deserve to be loved. So wow, that was a lot. That was a whole lot and, uh, and, and pretty hard too. So if you would like a personal reading for a little bit more clarity, you can contact me at, I'll put it up here, my email address. Thanks for watching and if you haven't already, be sure and watch the Mercury overview. Okay, Reiki blessings. Speak soon.